My name is Janan Alani and I'm an artist. I was born um, in 1966 in the north of Iraq in a town called Kirkuk and um, I left Iraq in 1980 and moved to Britain. We left just as tensions were rising and very soon after we left the Iran-Iraq war started. My practice moves between the photographic and moving image and in quite a lot of the work is actually about that. It's about the relationship between the still and the moving image. Shadow Sites 2 is made exclusively from photographs. So although it's a film, there is no moving image element to it. So the photographs that we're looking at were actually taken from the air over the landscape of the Middle East. And the sites that appear in the film range from ancient prehistoric settlements through to Roman sites, Nabataean sites, Islamic sites. Shadow site's a term that I've borrowed from aerial archaeology. And aerial archaeology is a discipline only really developed just after the Second World War. And a shadow site is, is one which can only be seen from the air when the sun is very low in the sky, so either very early in the morning or late in the afternoon. The landscape can kind of hold an image like that, which most times is invisible to us. There'd only be this kind of magical moment at dawn or dusk when it would appear if you were in the right position to see it. Another kind of overriding um, preoccupation I have is with the 91 Gulf War, the Desert Storm campaign. It's partly because it was such a kind of watershed in the way in which war was represented in terms of the general mass media. Looking at somewhere that I was familiar with from the outside, seeing this conflict unfolding through the media in the West, here in, in Britain, was a really um, important moment for me. It was the first time we saw the footage that was being recorded by the fighter pilots who were actually dropping the weapons. Now, after 90, the 91 Gulf War and on, the image that we receive as civilians of conflict is almost exclusively aerial. And the effect of that, the effect that it has on us as viewers who are consuming the images, is to give us the impression or to kind of mislead us into believing somehow that there's no, there are no bodies on the ground. This moment in 91 of seeing um, the landscape of, of what was Iraq then and Kuwait being represented in what I, which was so explicitly this Orientalist view that the desert is a big, beautiful, unoccupied, um, available space, you know, the space onto which any kind of fantasy can be projected. So the, the sites that appear in the film cover a very wide-ranging historic period. And what I was interested in doing was to show the way in which this landscape had been occupied over millennia by different tribes, effectively. Um, but the important fact was that it had always been occupied. So Shadow Sites 2, what it is doing, of course, is kind of replicating the idea of the, the drone, for example, you know, locking onto a site. We transition from one photograph to the next through this kind of zooming and then dissolving. And so the way that the film is built is on these kind of iconic, maybe we describe as kind of iconic geometric shapes. But obviously the other thing it did was it, it disappeared all the bodies. So the abstraction is kind of double-edged. 